Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, with a little antenna design idea for you. Uh, I don't have the real estate to conduct this type of experiment, but maybe you do, and maybe you have the wherewithal and the patience to try it. Imagine Here's a polar plot. For the moment, ignore this DBD circle and ignore this each concentric circle represents 5 dB. Ignore that for the moment and just consider this to be a, an H-plane view from high above, but not too high. And you place a quarter wavelength vertical right at the center here for either 3.5 or 7 megahertz. Now let's just say uh, for argument's sake that you decide to do this at 3.5 megahertz on the CW band. Maybe you would uh, prefer to use, uh, well suppose that you get a little more precise. <clears throat> 3.525 megahertz. How tall is that thing going to be? Well you can actually go ahead and calculate that. 234 divided by 3.525 it's going to be about 66.3 feet uh, about 66 and a half feet somewhere in that vicinity now this is a quarter wavelength vertical antenna ground mounted and you have a whole lot of radials here now let's consider this red circle to represent instead of DBD, suppose that it represents a radius equal to one tenth of a wavelength in free space away from the center. At 3.525 megahertz, that radius is going to be approximately, well, let's just go ahead and figure that out. A wavelength in free space at any particular frequency is 984 divided by that frequency. So that'll give you 279 feet. Now you divide that by 10 and you get about 28 feet. So the radius here equals 28 feet. That is this radius right there. And then at say let's just say you really want to go hog wild here you really want to do this right so what you're going to do is you are going to drill holes in the ground at 10 degree intervals all the way around the compass so you're gonna have 36 holes in the ground each one of them 28 feet away from the center vertical and all of those holes, each one of those holes is going to have a ground rod there. And you are going to put some radials out from each ground rod. So you're going to have your whole yard copper plated with radials. Suppose that you have an acre like I do at the Long Wave Ranch. Actually, I have 2.2 acres there, but a good clear yard of about an acre. Uh, I don't, uh, the Long Wave Ranch, unfortunately, is not... Um, available to me at the present time it's being rented out but if I ever went to live there I could do this uh, put a whole bunch of radials all over just basically copper plate the whole yard and at this radius here of one tenth of a wavelength I have 36 ground rods 36 little uh, stakes in the ground that I can stick another vertical antenna into but that vertical antenna is not going to be connected to anything it's going to be a parasitic element. In fact, we are going to have 36 holes for a director. A director to form a two-element parasitic vertical array. Now this director, the optimum length for a driven element director uh, Yagi, the optimum spacing for a Yagi, is about a tenth of a wavelength. 
between the driven element, which is at the center here, and that has coax goes to your radio, to your radio, and then you have these holes where you can, at will, place a director right in one of those slots. Now that director should be nine tenths the height of this other antenna, which would be about 66 feet times 0.9, or about 59, maybe 60 feet high. You just need one of those, and it's just a freestanding aluminum tubing that you probably have to have some good muscle in your arms to manipulate that. And then you choose whichever one of these holes you want to create a driven element director ground-mounted Yagi vertical. Now in this particular case, I've got this thing at azimuth 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, in Cody, Wyoming, that azimuth would lead us into Eastern Europe, probably. And we'd get a unidirectional radiation pattern. Now we can go back and look at the radiation pattern of this thing and consider this circle to represent 0 dBd with just the single vertical all by itself. This would have an omnidirectional pattern right at that red circle. But when you put that parasitic in there, you're going to get a unidirectional pattern with just about 6 dBd of gain. Now once again we can consider that each concentric circle represents 5 dB. We're going to get a unidirectional pattern with about 6 dBd of gain. Now that is the theoretical ideal, the perfection. In reality it might be more like 5 dBd, but consider that if you had a phased vertical array uh, optimized for unidirectional performance, you'd only get about 3 dBd. So you're getting another 3 dBd, and you're also getting the bonus uh, of a very low angle of radiation, which you, uh, if you wanted to construct an 80 meter two element Yagi and place it up at least 135 feet, be my guest. I think this is a little easier option. The only inconvenient feature of this is that if you want to change the direction that it's pointed, you have to physically go out there and move that uh, director. And remember, that director should be shorted to ground. It shouldn't be just left free. This is just a regular old quarter wavelength vertical antenna. So that will give you a ground-mounted Yagi vertical for 3.525 megahertz with low angle radiation. I'd venture to say that it'd be a pretty doggone good DX antenna. What do you think? Well, try it and tell me. Or if I go out there to the Long Wave Ranch in Cody, Wyoming, I'll try it and tell you what happened someday. Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of W1GV, saying 73 and so long for now.